Hello, my name is Erica. I'm currently a fourth year medical student and soon to be OBGYN intern. And in this video, I wanted to talk about how I studied for step two CK. In this video, first I wanna talk about what resources I used, and then I'll talk a little bit about how I used those resources and how I scheduled my studying. In terms of resources, I would still say that the gold standard for studying for Step 2 CK is UWorld. So just so you understand how I was able to use UWorld, I would do those during third year and that helped me prepare for shelf exams and also gave me a really good baseline before even starting to study for CK. So when I would do these UWorld questions, um, if you've seen my step one video, I kind of did the same thing with the questions where I would write down in a notebook the main concepts that I wasn't understanding. I think I actually used like one notebook and had two different rotations in there. I just kind of wanted them to be in separate spaces. So for instance, my first rotation was surgery. So I had a notebook and and in that notebook, I would just write down concepts that I found were really challenging for me and um, kind of like just some notes on looking into it farther by reading on up to date, by just Googling stuff and just adding more context to the information that I was learning from UWorld questions so that later on when I was studying for CK, I could come back to these notes and they would make sense to me. I would know what things I was struggling with before to see if I was still struggling with them and to hit those topics again because obviously they were difficult for me at some point. So then when it came around to dedicate studying for Step 2 CK, those notes really came in handy. However, I did end up using AMBOSS questions as well to study. I supplemented these questions by also reviewing the online med ed videos. And then at the beginning of my study period, I was using Step Up to Medicine to read and just review on the things that I struggled with. But then as time went on in my study schedule, I just kind of honestly got a little too lazy to read. So I just stopped using it altogether. The last resources I ended up using were some sort of way to measure my progress. So I wanted to use some practice tests. I did use both of the self-assessments that came with the UWorld package I ordered. And then I also used the NBME's practice exams, which are called CCSSAs. In terms of scheduling CS, I knew that my knowledge would probably be the best right after third year. So I wanted to take it before I started any other OA rotations or even like rotations in Reno. I just wanted to get it done with. And I also wanted to study for CK and not worry about studying for anything else or being busy, being on rotations. So I did take about three weeks off um, totally from rotations from fourth year to be able to study for my exam. Honestly, three weeks felt like way too much and I think I probably should have only given myself two weeks. I especially say this because I actually started studying for CK during my last rotation during third year, which was OBGYN. And that was pretty stressful for me because at the time I was considering maybe going into OB, so I knew I had to do really well on the shelf and during my rotations. But I also felt that doing well on CK was important too. So at my school, our OBGYN rotation is a 6 week long rotation, and I decided that I wanted to study for CK during three of those weeks, on top of, of course, doing my rotations and studying for the OBGYN shelf as well. The first two weeks of my OBGYN rotation, I did not study for CK at all. I was just focusing on getting used to being on that rotation, learning about OBGYN. And then for my third through fifth week of the rotation, that's when I started studying for CK and I did a more modified study schedule at this time. I would do 65 questions on New Worlds and then watch an hour's worth of online med ed videos. Usually I did this in like 30 minutes because I actually use two times speed whenever I watch those videos. And then whatever topic that those videos were for, so for example, if I was watching like surgery videos, then I would go back to the notebooks that I created using New World the first time around during rotations and I would review those notes as well. So that way it kind of overlapped with the videos that I was watching. And then I also divided the pages and step up to medicine. So that would also correlate with the content I was learning through the online meta videos as well as reading through my notes. So I tried to um, do as much overlap as I could and then the 65 questions that I would do a day were always on random. So that's basically all I did when I was studying, when I was still on rotations, because I didn't want to take too much time away from my studying on rotations and working really hard at the hospital, but I also still wanted to have a little bit more of a foundation coming in because I was kind of nervous to only have three weeks of dedicated to study for CK. Turns out three weeks is a lot of time if you have a solid foundation and it was almost like too much time to the point where I felt like I was going crazy and I just wanted to get it done with and it probably could have taken it a week earlier. 
So my study schedule during dedicated was super similar to my study schedule during OB, but it was just like higher volumes. So more questions, more time watching videos, more pages to read, that kind of thing. So if you look at my schedule that I have linked down below, the downloadable step two CK schedule, that is the schedule that I made for myself. And it has on it both of those three weeks during my OB rotation, as well as during my dedicated period. And you'll see there's actually a week between when I studied for CK during my OB rotation and when I had my dedicated time. And that's because I just wanted to give myself that full week to just focus on studying for the OB shelf. So during my three weeks of dedicated time of studying, I did three sets of 40 world questions timed and random. And then I would spend some time reviewing the missed questions. It really seemed like I was spending less time reviewing missed questions compared to the amount of time I spent reviewing missed questions when I was studying for step one. And I really think this is because I had a better understanding of the material to start with before I even started my dedicated period. And also because for step one, I only went through your world once, but for step two, I'm going through it twice because I used it during the year, during my rotations. And I just reset it prior to my dedicated period. And I would also watch about four to five hours worth of content on online med ed every day. Again, I would speed it up two times speed and I honestly would usually watch it while I was working out. So while I was running or on the stationary bike or something like that. I usually don't like to combine like working out with um, studying, but honestly, I just felt like so bored studying that I just felt like being active and like at least walking or running on a treadmill would make me like feel a little bit better about studying. I don't know. It made me enjoy studying a little bit more. So that's what I did this time around. And again, similarly to what I did during my OB rotation, I would read the corresponding notes to the OME videos that I wrote during my rotations. So for instance, if I was watching videos, about renal disease. I would go back to the renal notes I wrote from the World Bank during my rotation in internal medicine and I would review those notes. And again, you'll see on my schedule that I had assigned pages from Step Up to Medicine that I was supposedly planning on reading and I actually didn't. And it's not that I just like didn't do Step Up to Medicine and you know like called it a day early. I actually started using AMBOSS questions. Step one, I had very regimented scheduled studying and I would get through everything that I planned on studying for the day and if I was behind I had like this whole catch-up system where I'd have an extra day off to like catch up on whatever I didn't do throughout the day um, but for step 2 CK I didn't find that as necessary for the most part I really did not read step up to medicine um, most of the time I just had those pages there it was, a, it was a good reference if I was watching a video and I needed to understand a little bit more or if there was something really specific I was struggling with and wanted to actually read about then it was really nice to have that text but honestly, I found it more useful to do practice questions and I'm just a way more efficient studier when it comes to doing practice questions versus just like reading through a book. I feel like sometimes when I read, I just like end up not being really like actively learning and I'm just like reading words and I'm not like retaining any of it versus when I'm going through a question, um, I really remember well what I get wrong and why. So I just feel like that is a little bit better for me as a way of studying. Again, like I said, I didn't really have as regimented of studying. So when I used AMBOSS, I would just select different topics. I'm pretty sure I actually got through every AMBOSS question there was for Step 2 CK. I just spent a lot of time doing practice questions. So when I used UWorld, I'd go really in depth through all of the explanations for the correct and incorrect answers but when I was using AMBOSS they also have a really good explanation system and it has like all these links for more information about each topic which was super helpful but if I felt like pretty solid on a topic I didn't even bother going through the like um, information that was there I still like skim through which what the incorrect answers were and if it was something I wasn't familiar with then I'd click on it and like read through it more diligently but if it was something that I was like pretty confident on then I didn't even bother reading it that's basically all I did for three weeks and you can see on my downloadable step to CK schedule um, exactly like how I like organized my time during the day including when I took breaks and when I would work out and all that kind of stuff um, because that is important to your mental health as well overall I definitely felt like my step 2 CK studying was a lot less intense than for step 1 and compared to my step 1 studying like I mentioned already before I definitely did a lot more questions and then the last thing I wanted to talk about was score prediction and practice tests so originally I was only planning on taking practice tests during the Saturdays of my dedicated period so I was only going to take two practice tests the world self-assessment one and two and I still did take those as a schedule but I also decided that it was important for me since I 
I realized how good of a learner I was from questions to do more practice tests. So I ended up taking the CCSAs that are on the NBME. I forget exactly how much they cost, but I will put that information and a link to where you can purchase those practice exams down below in the description box. So the first time I took a practice test was during the first Saturday of my dedicated period. So after I had a week of dedicated studying in and I took UWorld Self-Assessment 1. If you look at my downloadable schedule, you'll also see that that day I had scheduled to take an NBME as well. But that was definitely overkill and I think I would have exploded had I taken that many tests. So I just moved that practice test to a different day. And what's important to know here is that the CCSS A scores, I think definitely under predict how you're gonna do. In my personal opinion, I feel like UWorld self-assessments for step two were definitely more accurate. When you take the NBMEs, don't freak out if you don't do super well because I definitely did a lot better on the real test than I did on the self-assessments. On my first UWorld self-assessment, I got a score of a 265. I ended up taking CCSS A8 on June 28th, just a few days later, and I got a score of a 256. And I took UWorld self-assessment two just the day after on June 29th, and I actually ended up getting the same score on that self-assessment as the first one, so I got a 265 again. And I was a little bit worried that I hadn't improved from my first test, but I figured it also has to do with just like the differences in the self-assessments. And I still felt like I was learning and retaining um, more and more information. So I tried not to let the numbers bother me too much and just use them as extra practice questions to continue working on. The next practice test I took was on July 1st. So that was about a week out from my real exam. And I took CCSSA 7. And on that one, I actually did worst of all compared to any of my practice exams. And that was the worst one that I ever did for step 2 CK. And I got a 250 on that. I knew that the under predicted just based on what my friends had told me and what I'd read online and all that stuff. So I tried to mentally prepare myself for that and was like, don't worry, you're gonna do better than what the NBMEs say and whatever. But that one still freaked me out because I did like significantly worse compared to my other test scores. So that motivated me to do one last CCSSA and I did CCSSA 6 and I took that one three days before my test on the 3rd of July. I ended up getting a 262 on that one which made me feel much better because um, you know you add a few points to adjust for the fact that they underscore and that made me feel better about how I would do on the real test. For a big test I always like to take the day off before. I literally did no studying, I just relaxed watch TV, movies, whatever, worked out. My test day was on July 6th and I felt like kind of nervous that morning but not as nervous as before I took step one because I know step two CK scores aren't necessarily as important in terms of getting interviews for residencies. Also, I just felt more confident about the information um, that I knew because I had studied so much during rotations and I had studied so much during my dedicated period that I just felt like really ready for this test. But after I walked out of the test, I felt so defeated. I felt so difficult. I felt like I was just guessing. Like I definitely felt, you know, during the test, I was like, oh, this answer seems right, but I feel like I'm not 100% certain. And I had so many flagged, like a ton flagged, way more than my practice tests, way more than when I took step one. Like it just felt like I was going in there blind and guessing almost. I was pleasantly surprised when I got my score back and I actually ended up doing better than any of my practice tests have predicted me doing. If you've seen my step one videos, you'll know that I don't like to give out my exact score, but I will tell you that I did score in the 270s. So hopefully you will find that this information is coming from a valid-ish source. I know the N is one here and this is just my study schedule. So just to recap what I did to study for step two CK, every day I would use tons of UWorld questions and tons of AMBOSS questions. I would also spend some time watching online meta videos to review high yield content, but I didn't take any notes on that. And then I would also take the time to review the notes I had written previously using New World the first time around during my clinical rotations. And finally, the last thing I did to prepare for step two CK was to do practice tests, both using New World self-assessments as well as using the NBME's CCSSAs form eight, seven, and six. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it will guide you in terms of making a schedule for studying for step two CK. Please comment below on the content that you'd like to see. And if you're new to my channel, please subscribe so that you can see the new content I will be creating about being a medical student and soon being a resident.